there, Gemini. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your general tarot reading for the month of July of 2021. Yeah, thank you all so very much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Eric. It is so wonderful to meet you. And if you are returning, what is up, squad? So guys, this is a general tarot reading for the month of July 2021. Yeah, please keep in mind, this is a general reading, so take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Uh, we could be talking to a cross watcher here, yeah? So however this fit resonates for you, just place it in your life, but make sure not to fit, force anything to fit that doesn't naturally fit there, yeah? Um, I highly recommend that you guys, if you guys are new to the channel, that you subscribe for more in, for more content. But as always, liking, sharing, and commenting, subscribing, it's always recommended. Um, and if you, I, I also would love for you guys to really get engaged here, yeah? Let me know how you're feeling. How does this resonate with you? Um, if you just wanna get something off your chest, you just wanna express something, go ahead and do that. We have a safe space here, yes? And this is called Divine Conversations for a reason. I am here to provide a space for us to talk about it so that we can get through it, we can move through it, we can learn from it, and we can move forward, yeah? If you would like to get a personal reading with me, I am available for that. I am taking limited number of readings, so make sure to get yourself in there as soon as you can. Um, all the information is in the description box below. Just go ahead and check that out and send me an email, yeah? Also, if you would like to, I re recommend that you check me out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. We have a lot of great fun over there, and there's a lot of extra really great content that you already have access to should you sign up, yeah? All right, guys. So, Gemini, let's get straight into your pre-shuffle energies. You guys have to excuse me. I'm freaking hot. I'm sweating like crazy here. But um, I might have to turn the fan on. But anyway, the thing that I want you to ask yourself, Gemini, for this energy, or at least maybe for this month or whenever this resonates for you, is what is reciprocal? What is balance? What is a harmonized situation? Your overall energy here is the Six of Pentacles. Underneath the Six of Pentacles is what is what I'm really feeling like the universe is trying to bring forward for you right now. The sense of letting go of something. Underneath the Six of Pentacles is the Four of Pentacles. And then under the Four of Pentacles, you do have the King of Swords. You also have the Emperor and the Seven of Wands, which is... To be honest with you, Gemini, which is really reflecting everything that I've already picked up on here in terms of what has come out for your pre-shuffle. Again, <clears throat> Gemini, you are being asked to identify what truly would be reciprocal for you in your life. I feel like this message is guided towards or is for those of you that are really holding on to some sort of situation because of the status quo, because of... Um, uh, some sort of maybe what your family expects of you or societal standards, whatever. They're, you're holding on to something, Gemini, and you've been holding on to something and the universe has been trying to get you to let go of it. Because the universe is trying to get you to understand that maybe whatever it is you're involved with right now is really not beneficial to you. It's really not serving your highest good, okay? Why do I say all of that? Well, what has officially come out for you here is the star in reverse, the lovers in reverse. So you are showing up in your own reading here, Gemini, but you're reversed in this situation. You have the five of wands with the seven of pentacles and the hierophant, okay? There are two more cards here, but we'll get into that in a second. So what this is saying to me, Gemini, is whatever it is you are working with right now is not leading you to the sense of wish fulfillment that you had desired, and nor is it going to lead you to that. I think at this point, you're kind of starting to recognize that, yet there are still some energies, Gemini, of you kind of holding on to something for dear life, unfortunately. But whatever it is you are aligned with right now is not serving your highest good, the lovers in reverse, also your energy in reverse, and it doesn't seem to be leading you towards the wish fulfillment that you wish to receive. Um, and... I feel like this is a situation that you've been involved with or attached to for some time because of the Seven of Pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles represents having started a situation and worked towards it for a while to receive some sort of harvest at this point. But with the Seven of Pentacles, also coupled with the Star and the Lovers in Reverse, Gemini, I'm feeling like you're starting to get to an understanding of the fact that whatever it is you're involved with right now is not providing you with the harvest that it is you really wish to receive. And yet, there's a level of confusion 
um, internal struggle, but also struggle with other people and their opinions about the situation or maybe even their beliefs, their alignment. I feel like for some of you specifically, Gemini, you are allowing your alignment to be affected by others around you. And these feel like either um, uh, people are in a higher position than you. Um, hierarchically speaking, or maybe even like parents, I'm feeling like a mother and a father energy, one of both, maybe one of each, or maybe both, something like that. You are, it's almost as if you are continuing to force yourself to be in alignment with something that they are in alignment with because of their authority, because of their influence on you, because of who they are to you or who they've been to you. But at this point, Gemini, I feel like you're getting to a place where you're starting to question that and you're starting to look at what it is around you that you have to show for the efforts that you've been putting in or the work that you've been doing. And I, and I feel like there's this growing feeling of, of, uh, of discontent because you're not getting what you want out of it. You're starting to realize that this actually isn't what you want. And yet the established energy is causing you to stay here. And that's why spirit is asking you, what is really going to be reciprocal for you, Gemini? Asking you to ask that question, to answer that question for yourself. Last two cards here, you do have the five of pentacles, but then you also have the knight of wands. So Gemini, I feel like this five of pentacles energy is connected to all of this stuff that we were just talking about here. The star in reverse, the lovers in reverse, the seven of pentacles, the five of wands, the hierophant, and the five of pentacles. You have three fives here, five of pentacles, five of wands, and the hierophant, which is a five. That's five, five, five. So this is a number of change here, okay? But what's, stick, what's keeping you attached to this situation, Gemini, is a sense of a lack mentality, not feeling good enough. And that's also kind of why I feel like you're continuing to allow your vibration or your alignment to be, a, be manipulated by these individuals. Now, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not saying that um, generally, generally, overall, these individuals are trying to be manipulative. But this state of uh, lack mentality, whether that be lack of belief in yourself or lack of belief in your uh, alignment with abundance or your ability to align with abundance, something, some, something you feel that you're lacking within yourself is causing you to seek out the counsel of someone who may be, have some sort of authority over you. But what you need to realize here, and this is part of the question that the universe is presenting to you at this point, what you're needing to realize is just because something works for somebody else doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you. And I'm not sitting here saying that you shouldn't get advice from people, especially from people that you really respect, but you still have to take that with a grain of salt because just because it worked for them or just because it was in alignment with them doesn't mean that's in alignment with you. So it feels like, Gemini, you are being influenced to get down to the deeper aspects of yourself and of your soul and figure out what really lights you up. What do you really want to move forward with passionately? That needs to come from within. It can't come from the external. All right, Gemini? Okay, cute. So um, I'm going to reset here, and then we're going to get into the rest of your reading. Yeah? Okie dokie. Give me just a moment here. Let me just re... Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Okay, so um, you have the Seven of Swords, which is in reverse now, and then you have Temperance. All right, so you have to release, and then the Six of Wands. So your victory, okay, your personal victory, your personal self-vindication, we'll call it, comes from you releasing the illusions or the deception, the trickery, the tomfoolery, and focusing more on balance within yourself, integration and harmony and union within yourself. That's going to help you understand what it is that you need to understand to get to a, a place of knowing what is actually in alignment with you, what serves your highest good, what is best for you, without having to seek all kinds of external counsel. That is going to bring justice into your life balancing the scales and that's going to give you an, a, a place a point of view to cut out what no longer serves you okay all right gemini i'm going to give this five shuffles and then we'll get into the rest of your reading here we go one definitely make sure to check out your sun moon and your rising signs yes because that's really going to help you get an overall view for this month this is two even look at your venus sign especially if you're looking for messages in terms of love yeah this is three for my Geminis for the month of July, 2021. This is four. Five. 
And this is five. All right, I'm gonna cut the deck here, Gemini. All right, here we go. Overall energy for my Geminis for the month of July of 2021. Just like Aries and Taurus, all right? I did all three of you guys today. And overall energy for you, Gemini, is the Four of Wands. Now, for you specifically, I feel like you guys are in the process of getting here. Oh my God, this is so perfect. I almost wish I didn't pull this so I didn't see what was underneath at the bottom of it, underneath the Four of Wands, but we'll get there. But it's just like, it's so perfect because for you, Gemini, you are going through a, 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 a period of cultivating greater self-awareness to help you understand what it is you need to know for yourself and what it is you want for yourself so that you can start moving towards that. Again, so that other people's opinions or other people's alignments aren't affecting you, are you aren't trying to get into alignment with what someone else is in alignment with, what seems to be working out, 11-11 on the counter, what seems to be working out for someone else, trying to force yourself into their alignment so that you can get seem to get the same success. That's not the way this works. Everybody is different, all right? Everybody has different paths, has different points of view, have different interests, have different things that they want to go after and things they want to stay away from, okay? You do not have to absorb the alignment or the perspective or the point of view of someone else. You need to find that within yourself. That's what's going to provide you with this greater sense of stability moving forward. Underneath the Four of Wands is the Hermit. Okay? So there is the process of coming into a sense of self-awareness. Underneath the Hermit is the Ten of Cups. And then underneath the Ten of Cups, you do have the Page of Wands. So there you go. Re-identifying yourself. And what this means here for you, Four of Wands, the Hermit, and the Ten of Cups, you coming to a state or a sense of awareness of what truly matters to you on a soul level, even on an emotional level. And what matters to you does not have to be the same as what matters to your friends, your family, or your colleagues, or your higher-ups. Absolutely does not have to look the same as them. And that's... And, and, and what I'm feeling here, Gemini, is that's what you're working on identifying for yourself. That's what you're starting to learn about for yourself. So let's get into this here. First half and second half of your reading. The first half of your reading is going to kind of look at the past up until this moment. The second half of your reading is going to look at this moment, kind of looking off into the past, okay? First set of surrounding energies for you, Gemini, in the first half of your reading, you have the devil. Beautiful. I like this, Gemini. Because the devil is representing your chains, your ties, your attachment to things that actually do not serve you, do not serve your highest good, but may serve the highest good of some other people. Now, I'm not saying that this is happening for all of you, but for some of you out there, there are people that are manipulating you, <clears throat> that are trying to get you to stay in alignment with what they're in alignment with because it's, it feeds their ego, it serves their ego, it serves their... What's the word I'm looking for? It serves their agenda. And that's not good. That's not healthy. I mean, sure, it may look good for them. It may look safe and, and sturdy for them because, you know, they're reaping all the benefits from it. They're literally sapping your energy. And not just yours. There are other people connected to this, too. This feels like some sort of almost like a cult leader or someone. But this just feels really toxic. Okay, for some of you, I'm not saying that this is what's for all of you. For some of you, this is what's coming through here, all right? But you are learning to let go of this toxic tie. This does not serve anyone but them. Even if it's not that malicious, even if you're not in, finding yourself in a situation in which someone is actively trying to, is consciously working to manipulate you into staying with their, in their alignment, it still, it still serves them because it validates their experience. It validates their awareness. It validates their point of view. And that's not bad, but when it comes to influencing or guiding someone to get into alignment with something that they're in alignment with, but you aren't, that's where things kind of get destructive. And that's where a sense of authority can become toxic, okay? And I want you to look at it this way, Gemini. Instead of saying, influencing, if someone being in a sense of power and influence saying to you, well, you know, this worked for me, so I really think you need to get into alignment with this. To me, that's starting to cross the line of abuse of power. 
Because if I'm going to be in a, pl a, a place of authority here and I really want to help guide someone, I'm not going to sit here and say, well, you need to get into alignment with this because I've proven for myself that it's right. Well, yeah, I proved that for myself that it was right, but that doesn't mean it was right for you. So if I'm going to be in a place of power and I'm going to guide you, I'm going to be a mentor even, I'm going to try and get to know you. I'm going to try and get to know it. Get to the base, your foundation as an individual. What works for you? I'm going to help to try and influence you towards getting in alignment with yourself. Not in alignment with me, in alignment with yourself. And that is a much healthier way of using your authoritative, authoritative power. I'm not saying everybody is malicious and trying to take advantage of everyone. There are obviously some people like that out there. But that's what I want you to understand. That's per the per per perspective I think you need to start accepting. And maybe some of you already are. You're starting to see this, okay? Okay. The devil is coupled with the two of wands, Gemini. You have the choice. Now, here's the other thing about the devil. Yes, the devil represents toxicity. It represents danger. It represents madness. It also represents that which chains and binds you. But the thing about the devil is that normally on this card, they're depicted as having these chains around their necks. Yes, but it often looks like the chains are loose enough for them to just be taken off. And I have another deck here. I don't remember which one is it. Which is it? The mystical manga? No, uh, I think it's the witch's tarot. There's another deck that I have that I use pretty often that is that shows the devil as depicted with the two people, just like this, with the devil in between them. And there are these uh, ankle chains, right? But those ankle chains aren't even, they're, they're, they aren't even attached to their ankles. They're literally open on the floor. Not even, not even like they're open and around their ankles. It's not even on their ankles, okay? So that kind of represents the element of the devil only has power over you when you directly hand that power to it. You have the ability to choose to release yourself from this. And thus, there is that choice, the two of wands. This choice is yours, Gemini, okay? Yes, it's gonna take some courage, sure, okay. But it's needed, it's necessary, it's for your highest good, it's for your benefit. I will say though that whatever this is for you here, I don't want you to completely demonize it. I just, I'm so sorry you guys, I just did my nails last night and I just realized they're already chipped. Sorry about it, okay. Um, it, now this circumstance, I don't want you to demonize it too much because ultimately it has served to, to teach you something, all right? So let's just focus there, okay. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Gemini, in the first half of your reading, beautiful. You have the 10 of swords. I mean, enough said. What else is there to say there? This is the completion of this tough or challenging aspect of your life. And the most challenging aspect of it was you trying to fit yourself as a, you, were, you trying to fit a circle into a square, so to say, right? That was the biggest struggle here. But that seems to be ending when you find a sense of self within, a greater sense of self, harmony and union within yourself within, yes? The Ten of Swords is coupled with the Two of Cups. Oh my God, there it is. There is that harmony, that balance, that sense of, con uh, of, of connection with yourself, the balance between masculine and feminine within you. That, the harmony of that, that is what's bringing this to a close for you. That is what's ending this toxic or difficult cycle for you. Or that is what's going to end that difficult cycle to you. Get to know yourself, Gemini. Self-awareness is one of your absolute strongest suits in life because when you are self-aware, this energy can't, can't do anything about that, cannot affect you. Or if they do end up affecting you, man, it's going to be extremely hard for them to do it, okay? Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, Gemini, is the Two of Swords, okay? Well, there's the sense of denial. That's a sense of denial, Gemini, not going to lie. That is denial here. All right, so for some of you, what's been happening lately is that um, this, this push towards a greater sense of awareness has been coming up for you. And you've been sitting there like, nope, 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 I don't want to see it. I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. What does not compute? I don't need, yo no hablo inglés. I, I, I don't even speak this language anymore. What are you talking about? I don't know who you are. Stop bothering me. And yet, you're rolling around with the devil here, all kinds of uncomfortable. Okay, two of swords is coupled with, ah, there's the high, the universe, the high priestess. 
some of the reasons as to why you may have been rejecting this or, or approaching this with a sense of resistance or denial, Gemini, is the fact that the universe is coming forward with higher guidance that you can't quite understand yet, or at least you don't know where this is going to lead you should you take on whatever the universe is bringing up for you. And this is kind of feeling like better the devil I know than the devil I don't. Like, okay, I'm familiar with this surrounding. I'm familiar with where I am right now. But where you're pushing me or leading me to go, I don't know what's going to happen there. So you know what? I'm not even going to entertain it. But ultimately, this is serving your highest good. I want to say in the long run, but also I just heard in the near future, this is actually going to prove to have served your highest good if you just surrender and let go and sink into it. Let go of the denial, let go of the resistance, and just trust that the universe has your highest good at its, in, in, uh, has your highest good in the focus here for you. And you have to understand, um, I do feel like part of this, this, all, this does kind of feel like a bit of indoctrination here, especially since the Hierophant did come out in the beginning of the reading and the Hierophant can represent indoctrination. But then also the High Priestess is the counterpart to the Hierophant, right? The Hierophant is the three-dimensional, tough, institutionalized energies and lessons that we have to learn in life. The High Priestess represents freedom from that. Um, but you're dealing with a sense of indoctrination, thinking that what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And sure, sometimes that is appropriate, but not in this situation here, because we are talking about you as an individual, as an individual soul with its own agenda, whether you want to say that's a good or a bad word to use here. Your soul has its own agenda, just like every other soul in this life. And the Hierophant represents that sense of conformity of one size fits all. What's good is good for the goose is good for the gander. But in this situation, Gemini, it's not. Because you are a unique individual. And what the high, high Priestess is bringing forward for you is a sense of that uniqueness and a sense of the unique path that you, on a soul level, wish to take, wish to walk. So please release this resistance to it because it's, it's going to lead to some really... The Ten of Cups. Your ultimate emotional fulfillment. Your ultimate happiness. Eventually, in the long run, should you persevere with this. Yes? Closing message. Or potential outcome for you, Gemini, in the first half of your reading, the Four of Swords. Rest, relax, take a chill pill, chill out, okay? This, Especially if you find yourself really freaking out here, because now I'm seeing the Nine of Swords in my head. So if you're really freaking out about this, meditate as much as you can. And even if meditation doesn't look like you sitting down in like lotus position with certain mudras in your hands and like chanting and, and, and all that stuff... A meditation could really also be just you taking a walk in the park. I'm seeing for some of you specifically walking on the ocean or walking by a, a, a waterway or something like that. Um, anything that helps you clear your mind, helps you balance your mind, helps you get out of that freak out mode and that, 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 uh, that uh, fight or flight mode and just helps you center and ground and, and, and settle into the moment, okay? You don't have to handle everything at once, Gemini. You can take it as it comes. You have just closing message, potential outcome in the first half of your reading is just relax. Take a chill pill, okay? Work on gaining a sense of mental clarity. There may be a lot of influence from these other individuals that are really like clouding your mind. And for some, oh gosh, I really don't, I really don't like this part of the narrative, but I'm just the messenger. It's not, it, it has nothing to do with whether I like it or not. But for some of you, there are individuals that are trying to get in and screw up your mental space so that you can't think clearly, so that you can't think for yourself, so that they can stay in control. It's for a select number of you, but it's coming through, so I'm going to say it, okay? That's another reason why you really just need to disconnect. If you've got to take some time away, especially with this hermit energy that's coming out for you in your overall energy, if you just got to disconnect and not communicate with these individuals or these people for a while, do that. Trust the process. Trust yourself. Trust your intuition, okay? Even if, okay, for some of you, I'm getting that the universe is actually putting blockages between communications between you and, other pe and these other people, and they're happening in some really crazy and synchronistic and like woo woo out there ways and you're like what the fuck is going on hey go with it don't resist that okay it's for your highest good four of swords is coupled with the seven of pentacles 
You need time. There's the seven of pentacles again, Gemini. You need time to think about this, okay? To go over your harvest, to process what is be, what, what, what you are able to harvest from this situation and understand for yourself, is this actually what I want? Or am I just told, am I just being told this is what I want? Ooh, I felt that one. Is this what I want or is this what I'm being told that I want? Oh, that was powerful. Woo! Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> oh, that struck a chord. Yeah, sure did. <laughs> okay, Gemini. Let's get into the second half of your reading, yes? So this is the current energies or the current moment looking off into the future a little bit, yeah? First set of surrounding energies for you, Gemini, you have, there's the four of pentacles again. So what I'm feeling here, Gemini, is this, is this, this is you coming to the point where now you're like, okay, what do I need to let go of here? But something, something's gotta go. Something's gotta go. Mm -hmm. Four of pentacles is coupled with the wheel of fortune. That's right. See, this is, that. that's what I meant. That's what I felt. This is representing that moment in time where you are now able to question really question, ask yourself, what am I going to let go of here? And it's not just about questioning whether you're going to let go of it. It's questioning it with intentions to actually let it go. This is a big change for you. Because I think at this point, you're starting to realize that whatever it is that's holding you back is only keeping you cycling through this karmic energy. So this is that moment where you allow yourself to release whatever it, need, you, it is you need to release so that you can step off this karmic hamster wheel. Yep. Yes, it diddly do. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Gemini. In the second half of your reading, you have the Eight of Pentacles. Good. So I see you here doing the work, building or working towards what it is you want to build for your life, getting involved in the creative process. I like this. The Eight of Pentacles is coupled with Boop, there it is, Gemini, the chariot, all right? This is, okay, so uh, moving forward here, looking off into the future, it's really starting to look like there is a big shift that's happening for you. You're getting in tune with what it is you actually want to work with or work towards, and that all comes from this process of self-awareness that you are undertaking. So I'm definitely seeing... Maybe even by the end of the month, I don't know. I don't. I don't really deal with time frames, you guys, because everybody's different, and free will has the the ability that we all have towards free will always affects our timelines. Okay, so like I'm not even I'm not even concerned with the timeline here, but there what I'm seeing is a big shift for you, Gemini, in this energy of getting out of this devil energy. You're out of the con confinement of. Things that no longer serving you are, are are no longer serving you, and getting into alignment with what you, is you truly want, the direction that your soul truly desires to move in, and then working towards it. I love this for you, Gemini. Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Gemini. Ooh, is the Empress. Oh shit. Okay, some of this. Oh god. Um, some of this has to do with your mother. Yikes. Okay, or like a mother figure or a matriarch or something like that. Some of you don't want to disappoint your mother. And look, I'm sure mama means the absolute best. She has the best intentions for you. She wants her child to be happy, safe, healthy, and uh 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 what? And um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh my God, you guys. Successful. Mm, but mama doesn't always know best, you guys. I mean, like, I don't, I mean that with all the love in the world, but mama doesn't always know best. Okay. Sometimes you're just going to have to step on out there and do what it is you're being called to do, regardless of what anybody in the power of authority say. Otherwise, this challenge for you is, uh, getting into abundance, allowing the abundance of the universe to nurture and help you develop whatever it is you are seeking. I definitely feel like this is also connected to the five of pentacles energy where there was a belief of a lack abundance of abundance or maybe even a, a, a lack of awareness of your ability to be abundant, okay? Moving forward, I feel like you're really going to be working on being in this rece receiving energy in terms of abundance for your life. The Empress is coupled with Ah, yes, the Eight of Swords. There you go. There's that confinement. There is that 
the barrier or the, yeah, the confinement in terms of the abundance you actually have access to, okay? Your challenge moving forward is working towards breaking yourself free, eight of swords, uh, in terms of being in alignment with abundance, okay? Closing message, or I'm so sweaty, you guys, can you see it? Oh, I'm sweating bullets, man. All right, closing oracle, uh, closing message or potential outcome for you in the second half of your reading here, Gemini, you have the king of pentacles. Self-awareness is key, Gemini, and I really feel like you're getting into that. You're get, you, you will be able to get into a place where you can be solid and good on your own and so stable that you don't have that you don't have to worry about what other people have to say or what other people think you should be working towards because you're solid and you're good with your within yourself. You are that immovable rock. I like that, Gemini. To, uh, the, well, yeah, the King of Pentacles also represents Taurus, but the King of Pentacles is coupled with, there you go, the Knight of Wands. So your closing message or potential outcome, I really do feel like this is a potential outcome for you, Gemini. This is you being solid enough in yourself to move forward in the trajectory that truly is meant for you or truly aligns with you. Enough said. Okay. Shoot, you better go and get it, Gemini. <laughs> hey! All right, we're going to close out this reading here. We're going to get you some Oracle guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck. Yes? All right, three shuffles. One. Two. And three. For my Gemini is closing out this reading for Gemini. What closing oracle guidance do we have for Gemini this month for their monthly general tarot reading? Yeah, closing oracle message for my Gemini's, please, spirit. Ooh, there's two of them. Okay. Are there three? Nope, there's only two. Okay, that's fine. We're going to take both of them. And they're perfect. They are absolutely perfect. This is exactly what we've been talking about in this reading here. You have card number 22, Discernment. Archangel, I'm sorry, Ascended Master Hilarion and Green Crystal Phrase. Crystal Praise, excuse me. And then you have card number 15, Archangel Raphael and Malachite. Grace for the Grand, grand Gesture. I want to start with card number 22. Because discernment is exactly, the, is the key here, is the key to all this transformative energy that you're dealing with, all right? Being able to discern what's actually in alignment with you, what's actually right for you, and what's not, okay? We bring you the blessing of discernment. There is an expression that all that glitters is not gold, and that appearances can deceive. This does not mean you must greet the world and all its appearances with suspicion and distrust. It does mean it is wise to trust what you feel and sense happening beneath the surface, even if that, me even if that seems to directly oppose what is being said or what many others may believe. The world is filled with opportunities for you to practice sensing truth behind the mask. You will not, I'm sorry, you will do this most accurately when you allow your instincts and intuition to inform you without rationalizing the information so it matches the superficial appearance of things. If intuition or instinct is niggling at you, then it is trying to communicate something. Listen, take your time to feel your authentic response. Discernment helps you cut through illusion, manipulation, and deception and get to the heart of the matter at hand. It is the intelligent use of your intuition and instinct that will help you navigate through the multitude of choices available to you every day and choose what best serves your life journey. Ah, it's perfect. All right, last we have card number 15, Grace for the Grand Gesture. We bring you the gift of grace for the grand gesture. Although there are times when even the smallest act, such as choosing to think a positive thought, is enough to transform your world, there also comes a time for the leap of faith, the grand gesture of unconditional trust that will free you from the past and empower the universe to gift you with a new future. The grand gesture is a big step, the willingness to say to the universe, quote, I trust you and I know it is time for life as I have known it to give way for a bigger, bolder experience and I am willing to allow you to lead me into it. 
You then make an offering which confirms your declaration and empowers the universe to reward the faith you have demonstrated. The grand gesture cannot be forced. If it comes from a place of, quote, should or uncertainty, then you are not ready. The grand gesture must be unconditional. It must be something you offer, not for what you can get in return, although the rewards will be rich, but because you are willing to offer something of yourself in service to love. When it comes from this place, the grand gesture is a trigger for divine grace to express itself in your life in an entirely new way, surpassing all expectations and showering you with blessings. So beautiful. There you have it, Gemini. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, and leave your comments in the section in the comment section down below. I love hearing from you guys. Let's have a conversation about it, yeah? I am available for a limited number of personal readings. If you would like to get one from me, just check the information in the description box below. Also, I highly recommend that you check out Patreon, yeah? Patreon.com slash Divine Conversations. That can also be found in the description box below as well. With that said, I hope you guys have an excellently fantastic month. I love you guys so very much. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>